Hello and welcome to the LTL Mandarin School YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be about a really popular query that we get with many of our Mandarin language students. That query is HSK or HSKK and today we're going to answer your FAQs and give you an introduction into the HSK exam and the HSKK exam. So roll the intro! Thank you very much for joining us today at the LTL Mandarin School YouTube channel. My name is Max and I work for the marketing team here at LTL. So today's video is basically brought to you because one of our students actually on our Instagram channel asked me about the HSKK exam and the resources we have for it. And embarrassingly, we didn't really have much at all. And it's something that we have been asked about by a number of students before. So we got straight to it. We wrote this blog, which you can see on the big screen behind me here, which is HSK versus HSKK. And I'm going to relay that information to you in this video here. So if you would rather not listen to me narrate the story and read instead quietly with a cup of tea, then I suggest you go over to our blog. It's ltlschool.com forward slash HSK versus HSKK. A link will be right down there in the description as usual. Right, so the most commonly asked question really is the one we're going to come to first, and that is, what's the difference between the HSK and the HSKK? And the answer is very, very simple. So we'll quickly break down what HSK and HSKK stand for. So HSK stands for Han Yu Shui Ping Kao Shu. This exactly translates to Chinese level test. Quite simply, Chinese level test, so your proficiency in using Chinese. HSKK stands for Han Yu Shui Ping Kou Yu Kao Shu. So it has three of the same words, but the Kou Yu stands for spoken. So you can probably guess that HSKK is a spoken exam showing your spoken proficiency in Mandarin, and HSK is everything else, and that is essentially the difference. So the HSK will test your listening, your reading, and your writing, but it won't test your speaking ability. The HSKK, however, only tests your speaking, and the exam is much shorter, but we'll come to that later on. So what's the difference? It's that HSKK is a spoken proficiency exam in Mandarin. HSK covers everything else. So another popular question we get is, how long are the HSK and HSKK exams? And again, the answer is quite simple. The HSKK exam is actually probably one of the quickest exams you could imagine taking. Generally, it will only last 15 minutes, and that is the same from beginner, intermediate and advanced. So we'll find out shortly that that's not the case with the HSK, but the spoken version, the HSKK, is super fast. The exam will be over within 10, 15, 20 minutes. The HSK, on the other hand, can last anything from 35 minutes to 2 hours and 15 minutes, the most gruelling of the lot. And that, of course, depends on your level. So the easiest, or let's say easiest level, which is HSK1, currently lasts just 35 minutes. So it's actually also pretty quick and done relatively painlessly. You go all the way through and the time goes up depending on your level and the top level currently uh, as of 2021 is the HSK 6 and that lasts 2 hours and 15 minutes which is 135 minutes so a whole 100 minutes more than the HSK one. So the answer is that they all differ but the HSKK the spoken element is much much quicker than the HSK exam. So another thing that our students always want to know, of course, is when can I take these exams? And again, the answer is quite simple and it's all on our website. So on the screen right now, you're going to see the dates for the HSK exam. So the HSK can actually be taken every single month of the year. There are set dates, which we always release on our website. So 
you can go to ltlschool.com forward slash HSK exam to find these dates and everything else. And we update that every year so you know exactly when you can take the HSK. The HSKK does take place less frequently than the HSK as the demand is also much less. In 2021, you'll see on the screen that there were seven different dates available, whereas with the HSK exam, you can take one every month of the year. So it will depend each year. We will publish all the details on our website. So if you wish to know for 2022 and onwards, just go to ltlschool.com forward slash HSK exam. So we wanted to address this question, but unfortunately we don't have the answers for you just yet, and that's because nothing has been published. So you will probably know if you're a Mandarin student that there will be a new HSK exam in 2022. It's supposedly going to be released in March. It's already been put back. We filmed another video about this last year, answering all your questions about the new HSK. We're going to be doing another one in the near future as well with more up-to-date news because of course this is an ever-changing and evolving situation. New HSKK, we don't know yet. Nothing has been published by Hanban or anyone else. So although we know that the HSK will be going from 1 to 6 to 1 to 9 levels, we don't know if the HSKK will change from its current three-level structure to four, five or six levels or if it will just stay the same. So as of yet, we don't know. But if you go to our new HSK video, when we publish that in due course, you'll get the answers there. So another key difference between the HSKK and the HSK is the number of levels available. So the HSK exam, as we just mentioned, goes from levels one to six, with one being the lowest level and six being the highest. That will change to one to nine. The HSKK, however, doesn't follow the same structure. It just follows a three level format, and that is simply beginner, intermediate, and advanced. The beginner level HSKK requires you to know roughly 300 spoken words in Mandarin, and the intermediate level requires you to know roughly 900 words in Mandarin. If you're feeling brave and ready to take on the advanced level HSKK, you will need to have roughly 3,000 Chinese words to your armour. So if you have that and you think you can use them all, then why not go ahead and take the advanced HSKK? The exam itself is actually quite an interesting one. It's really quick and essentially what happens is you listen to pre-recorded questions and then you give your response into a microphone. So you're speaking into a microphone, which is different, I believe, to how some of the European spoken tests work. So you will listen and then you'll speak into a microphone and give your response. Your answers are then sent off to an invigilator and they will assess your spoken ability and give you a score accordingly. So the HSKK exam is broken down into three different sections depending on which level you are taking. The beginner, intermediate and advanced all start with the same section and it's called listen and repeat. Quite obvious what it means, you listen to an extract and you repeat what's been said. The second section will change depending on which level you're taking. So if you're taking the beginner section, you will have a section called listen and reply as the middle part of the exam. If you are taking the intermediate HSKK, the second section will be describing the pictures. So you will be given a picture and you have to describe it in the best way you can using your Mandarin. The middle section of the advanced exam is called read aloud. And this is where you are given a passage and you have to read it aloud. The final section of the beginner, intermediate and advanced is all the same and it's called answer questions. And this is where you have a question and you have to answer it in the most detailed and best way possible. So three sections for each exam. The first and the last are the same format for every level and the middle one will be different. 
Again, if you pop over to our blog right there, you'll see all that in a bit more detail, including timings and everything else. This is a question that many students end up asking, and the answer is actually not too difficult, but it really depends on what you're after and what your goals are when it comes to studying Mandarin. Should I take the HSK or the HSKK? So you need to think first, what are you taking the exam for? You need to define it and figure out what your purpose is. So are you looking to take the exam to get a job or to get into a university or something like this? If that's the case, typically they ask for a HSK of a certain level, which might be three, four or even five. And the HSK will typically be the one that they want because that shows your all round ability with Mandarin and not just spoken. If you need an exam certificate to certify your speaking ability, this is rarer, but it still can be relevant in some cases, then the HSKK exam would be the one to take. But I would really only take this one if you need to certify your speaking abilities, or of course the other reason might just be you want to take it just to see how good you are at Mandarin. We also get students who just wish to take exams for fun. As weird as that sounds, it does happen. Can you take both exams, you say? Why would you want to do that? Well, in fact, of course you can. You can take whatever exam you want. There's no limit on how many HSKs you can take and whether you need to take one or the other. You can take both. And if you're feeling particularly fruity, you can actually take both the HSK and the HSKK on the same day, those sharp-eyed ones of you would have seen the dates earlier on the screen pop up and you'll have noticed that the HSKK dates all align with the HSK date so you can actually take the HSKK exam the same day as your HSK exam. Now for some people that would be their worst nightmare, why would you force yourself to have two exams and you've got to have one? But for some people it actually works quite well because your mind is fully in Mandarin mode on that day, whether you take one or two exams. So why not crank them both through and get them done and dusted and you're good to go. So can you take both? Of course you can. If you really want, you can take them both on the same day. Right, so we wanted to provide you with some quick fire tips and tricks to prepare yourself for the HSK exam. We've got a total of seven. That's seven in Chinese hand gesture mode. So let's go straight through to them right now. Tip number one for passing the HSKK is get yourself into small group classes and get talking. Now, this is a great opportunity, of course, for me to plug LTR Mandarin School, but that's not the reason that is a tip. It's because if you want to take the HSKK, you need to be confident moving your mouth and using your voice in Mandarin. And that's something that some people get to HSK three or four, but they're still not confident speakers. And that is something that you shouldn't fall into. It's a trap and you don't want to be there. Get speaking early and small group classes are a brilliant way to do that. So this is actually the reason at LTL why we only provide small group classes. Our groups never go above six people and actually online, they average out of just two per person. Funnily enough, I just came out of a class just a while ago. I was the only person and I spoke loads of Mandarin for an hour and it was great. So tip number one, get speaking and do that in small group classes. Tip number two, is to watch Chinese TV shows and dramas and films. This is a great way to get used to how natives use spoken Mandarin. We provided another video not so long back on our favorite Chinese dramas that foreigners should watch to learn Chinese. There'll be a link to that in the suggested videos, so I recommend you go and check some of those out. Tip number three follows in the same vein to the previous tip, but this one is listen to podcasts. Again, very obvious why. You wanna to listen to natives speak in Mandarin and you wanna absorb it as much as you can, and if possible, repeat. So pause and repeat, pause and repeat pause and repeat again and again and again and get used to speaking how natives speak. Tip number four is also a similar one. It's 
records or recordings with transcripts. So this is where you listen to a recording, but you have a transcript there ready. So you, if you don't understand some things, you've got everything written out in front of you. And there's loads of these resources available online. Back straight to our blog again over there. We've got some more tips on things that you can follow. YouTube videos is always a good one. There's lots of transcripts there. So listen to recordings or watch recordings with translated transcripts. Tip number five is to get yourself a language partner. This is a really, really good thing to do and it's super, super handy. Finding one is typically the hard thing, but there's a really good app actually called Hello Talk, which we've written a review for on our website. It's, the link will be in the description below and it's essentially a place where you can meet language partners from all over the world, given your target language. So that's one really good area to find language partners. And then you can go 50-50. So let's say I wanted a language partner in Japanese. I would simply just find someone using the Hello Talk app and we would spend 50% of our time, whether it be online or in person, speaking Japanese and 50% in English. It's free and it's also a great way to make new friends. Tip number six. This is one that you'll probably hear for every single exam that you've ever taken, but it's just so relevant. Past papers, use them, listen to them, absorb them and make the most of them. They're there for a reason. They're there to show you exactly what you need to do to pass the exam. So don't ignore them, don't fear them, use them. And again, there's a link on our blog which you should follow. And the final tip is actually not really a tip, but it kind of is at the same time. Enjoy it, enjoy the ride. When Mandarin becomes a struggle or a chore or difficult or a pain in the backside or something that you don't want to do, chances are your motivation does that. It drops off a cliff and you don't want to study it anymore. You need to keep finding fresh new ways of enjoying it, whether that be watching a new TV show that you really like or finding a new language partner or finding a new artist in music that you like listening to in Chinese. Find ways that keep you engaged and motivated. Something I did that I found really useful, I'm a massive football, or for our American friends, soccer fan, <laughs> hate using that word, sorry. And what I did, I went to lots of Beijing Guang games when I lived in Beijing on my own, and it was great because I could listen to the natives, I could pick up words, I watched the highlights on the TV and I started to take friends actually from LTL along with me and even Chinese friends and it was a really good way for me to absorb the language and learn new things because I enjoyed it. I love sitting and watching football and that really sparked a new passion for me again with Mandarin. So that's our seven top tips for passing the HSKK with flying colours. So those are your most frequently asked questions with HSK versus HSKK. I hope you found the video useful. I hope we answered all the questions that you had. Remember, as I've already mentioned, there's a load of links down below that you'll find really, really useful if you want to find out more. Please leave us a comment if you've got any more questions or you can contact us as well on our website. We're always available, we're always there, and we will reply to you within one working day, always. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope to see you again very soon. Don't forget, like the video if you got this far, and drop us a subscribe too. Have a great day, bye-bye.